Hi, welcome and thank you for your interest in SAS. This time we're gonna have a look at real-time communications, also known as how to keep your game synchronized across multiple machines. We're gonna start by having a look at the real-time synchronization in SAS and then we're gonna have a look at remote procedure calls. So first, let's actually have a look at what I've done before we start. I've created a new game object, which is gonna be our Pi icon. I've used uh, a shader that I found online, and I'll show you exactly where right now. I found the shader here, but since I also needed to have the Pi looking directly at the camera app, instead of just at the board app, I had to make a change, and I found that change at this other address. Please have a look, these are quite competently written shaders. Next, I've created the material, assigned it to our Pi, and then I made a little Pi script that is gonna destroy the Pi object after a second of its creation, and it's also gonna move it up slightly over time. After that was done, I wanted to have a look at our real-time part, coding part of the tutorial. First of all, let's actually have a look at rooms. Rooms keep the game synchronized. All the players that are in the same room will receive the same information, if we choose so. So first, I wanted to change the room on start, on init, really, and then I wanted to spawn an entity as soon as the room was changed. We hook up this changes and other signals in the SAS server. I also created this game object, but we're gonna take care of that later. So here, on the connection open and on switch room, I actually create, hooked up those functions. And then I dragged in the prefab into our net prefabs. These are the prefabs that we want to have synchronized on all machines. As you can see, I've created a script that inherits from Net Synchronizer and calls in it when it starts. This allows the Net Synchronizer class to do its job. Then I check if the room is ready and if the entity is actually local. If it's not like that, we just want to get the position. If it is like that, we want to process the input and then set the position. After that, I also wanted to have some debug information, so I went through all the net entities that are in the room according to the server, and then I wanted to check if we actually own one. And if we do, I want to log the UID and the owner of that entity in green. If not, all the other are going to be in white. Now, let's actually customize our entity to have that property position. So let's add a net uh, synchronizer variable call position inside of the SAS server, and you can see that is the same position variable that we have in our script. Now, let's actually try this by logging in, and we'll know that as soon as we log in, boom, here we go. We have spawned a net entity that has a UID on the server and has an owner that corresponds to us. Let's move into the next step, get into stuff online. So first of all, we wanna remove only for testing purposes, the remember authorization checkbox. That is gonna make sure that whenever we launch the application, our token is gonna be refreshed with the server, so we don't have problems when we are actually owning an entity or another based on the token. Then we're gonna build our application, and boom, now we have them both running. We're gonna log in with the tutorial usual credentials that we have from the last tutorials, and then I've made another account called test for, well, obvious purposes. We're gonna log in here as well, have a move around, and we'll check that, boom, they're both synchronized automatically. And that's it, you're done for now. In the next part of this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at remote procedure calls, also known as RPCs. As you've seen before, we use the real-time script to handle real-time communication. Now let's have a look at the RPC script. The RPC has to inherit from NetRPC, which is a class that handles messaging across machines. We're also going to need a reference to the synchronizer to identify our entity. Then we're going to create a serialized class like we did in the database and call init for the NetRPC. Then we're going to get our Net Synchronizer component. And here what gets interesting. We're going to check that the entity is local. We're going to get the ID of the entity and package it up and send it with the RPC with the parameter room, so that every other entity in the room is gonna receive this message. Then we're gonna check what happens when we receive the message with the execute RPC. We're gonna switch on the name of the message 
and if the message is spawn pi, we're gonna deserialize the message and check that the ID of the message is the same of the ID of this entity. If that is correct, we're gonna spawn the pi. Let's test this out in Unity. Let's actually go in, make sure that the pi object is connected to the RPC, log in with the usual credentials, and then pressing space will actually spawn our pies. Once we've done that locally, let's test it quote unquote online. Let's build the project, log in twice, once with our usual account and the other time with test account, and then let's switch back and forth and press space to see that in fact the entity is recognized for being the one that should spawn the Pi, and then of course we're gonna see the Pi spawn on the other machine. Here we go. And this concludes our journey into the Swiss Army server. If you've enjoyed it, well, that's great. If you have any questions, of course, leave them out in the comments. And, well, happy coding. Bye-bye.